great. Yeah, totally. <laughs> right. So we got great views. Um, it was a really, really nice morning. And then actually my other friend, Laura, um, met us on the way down. She brought me a latte from Old Mountain. That was nice. And uh, PB&J food was still going down really well. I'd eaten a lot. Um, yeah, so that was kind of, it was just sort of a nice hike. <laughs> great. Uh, and I was moving all right when we got down to the bottom. I really, you know, like the end was in sight. So I was ready to um, to get it over with, I think. So we, we got back down. I mean, it still was a long, it was a long round trip for those two, you know, mm-hmm. you know, for me. But um, yeah, we got back down. Uh, I had a milkshake waiting for me from Stuart. So that was Perfect. great. The bottom. Yeah. So I got back in the, the back of the truck and I put the Norma Tex on and I um, fell asleep actually for the. 30 minute drive or less, whatever it is over to uh, Whiteface. So we, we went over to the research center parking area. That's where I started the next, uh, the next climb. And this, you know, I've done many, many times. So I knew it really well. And that's why I saved it for last. I mean, it makes sense logistically with the driving and things to, to either do it like first or last usually. But um, yeah, so I figured I'd leave it for last. And, and I probably summited Whiteface more than any other high peak, I think, um, you know, either in training on it in the wintertime with like skiing and or uphill skiing or just, you know, using it in the summertime for training. But um, and actually, so my uh, my um, stepdad met me there with my dog because she was being, you know, like at my mom's um, for the whole duration. So he met me there. So she was she did white face with me, which was great. Very cool. Well, Esther and Whiteface, yeah. So that was nice to have her there. But and of course, by the time we got there, a storm had rolled in, and um, now it was getting kind of windy and cloudy. So I started up uh, Marble Mountain with a, a good friend, Monique, and we we she turned around at that point because she only, she wasn't planning on going with me, but she only had flip flops on, so she turned around, <laughs> and then Jay and Aaron caught up to me on my way up, um, going up to Esther. So. Things at that point were pretty wet. It was raining, I think, and Esther can always be kind of a muddy mess. So sure. that, that was typical. So we went out to Esther and um, and did that and then headed back. And I was moving pretty slow. Things were really <laughs> – I was psyched to almost be done, but I was in a lot of pain. Um, and so that, like, section between Esther and Whiteface that actually has some downhill in it was pretty excruciating. Um, again, normally something that I really enjoy because I can run it and it's fast. Um but not when I can't move quickly downhill. So that was slow, but I got up to the um, Wilmington turn there, you know, on the toll road when you pop out along the trail. And and I had other friends there that had gotten dropped off um, up on the road. So they were hooting and hollering. So that was exciting. And um, then they did the last stretch from there up to the very top with me. So that was really, really nice. And getting, getting to the top was pretty emotional for me. Um, You know, it was very, Typical, you know, cloudy, white face, foggy, can't really see the, you know, the castle at the top until you're like basically there. <laughs> and there it was, you know, and so making that last turn up to the, the white face sign was, um, was pretty powerful, actually. So we, we celebrated for a little bit. We sat and um, I drank a, like two sips of beer and I was like, that's enough. I need to make it down. <laughs> You and, guys can uh, celebrate, but I'm not done quite yet. Yeah, exactly. So we started back down the trail and uh, I ended up walking the road actually all the way back down to the toll booth and finishing at the toll booth because I figured the trail was going to be pretty painful. Um, and I had always thought maybe I would take the road down, you know, depending on, um, you know, friends and family wanted to jog it or walk it down with me. You know, originally I was thinking and um so I, yeah, I decided to stick with the road plan and just walk down, but it was still very, very slow. Um, but it was better, I think, than the trail on my extensors. Cool. Cool. Yeah. So it was getting to that toll booth was pretty exciting. I mean, I was, again, not, not in the best mood. <laughs> I was in a lot of pain, um, but pretty psyched to, you know, when I sat down on the tailgate for the last time, that was exciting. Sure. Yeah. So as you got to the finish line, you clearly had a whole mix of emotions going on, but uh, it seems like you were ready to let me go to sleep and sleep on this and think about it tomorrow sort of situation. Yeah. When I got to the finish line, I was definitely ready just to lay down and kind of, you know, it's a very overwhelming, but also kind of like, um, like there's, 
there's you know you just walk to the end of the toll road <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, <it's> yeah. Like, <laughs> sure you know? it's a victory um, walk though yeah it, it is you know but it was dark and there were lots of folks there that i hadn't seen and and um you know at all during the um the event that just came out for that which was really wonderful um and i felt bad that i wasn't more engaging but i think they understood oh yeah i would have to <laughs> assume so um so it was great you know and um my mom had brought a little champagne and stuff and so yeah i had a sip of champagne i was like okay i'm ready to lay down again and, and go home cool cool <laughs> yeah it was good there it is that's the the whole trip so now that the attempt is over you know the task is completed obviously the fkt element element of it didn't work out exactly how you had hoped you know there's some disappointment there but what you still did incredible but knowing what you know now is there anything you would have done differently next time not that there is a next time but what would you have done differently in hindsight now yeah i think um having a another crew person on the ground that was just you know just like a driver slash organizer um would have been important that way they could get more rest um i think I think I would still um, approach it by doing the runnable sections first. Um, and yeah, I think I would still do it that way, but I would probably sleep more, like I said, um, the first night and then sleep less as I went in farther into it. Um, and I might change, I mean, I might change the route slightly. There's a few things I actually <laughs> was talking about with Jan on our hike up giant <laughs> about other ways. Mm-hmm. Um, that maybe would have been a more appropriate or, or better in the future. So I'm not, you know, certain that I won't try it again, I guess. Sure. Any, <laughs> anything is, is open then at that point. Yeah. You know, I, I think I was saying this to some friends yesterday, you know, as an ultra runner, people that are um, even, I mean, hikers, anybody that's um, driven this way, I think have a kind of endless goal, you know, that they always have to have something, all, you know, beyond the horizon that they're reaching for. So for myself, I think it does feel a little bit like unfinished business. So we'll see. All right, cool. So now anytime I have someone come on the podcast at the end, I'd like to ask them uh, three quick questions. What are, what do you keep in your backpack? What's like a special thing or something unique that you always have to have in your backpack when you're out there? Um, yeah, it was actually, well, I would say that Coban that I mentioned before, I've definitely now started carrying all the time. Um, it's what I had in my pack from UTMB in 2018. They make you carry a whole list of required equipment um, to do that race. And so in my training pack, I always had a piece of Coban after that, which I used to wrap my ankle when I broke it. So, um, you know, you just never know when something like that's going to happen. Cool. And now for you, you're from the Adirondacks, but you've also raced all over the world. In your opinion, what makes the Adirondacks such a unique place? Man, it's um, a lot of things. I think the combination, I mean, these trails are rugged, like they are rugged comparatively to a lot of places. Um, And I think what makes a place so special is like the community that surrounds it. You know, the Adirondacks are a very unique community of people as well. Um, the history here is something that's really cool to me. The, um, you know, the history of the 46ers, but also, you know, like Esther climbing, at, you know, mm-hmm. that peak, thinking she was doing whiteface at 15 years old um, in the late 1800s is amazing, <laughs> you know? Um, so I think, and, you know, I think you find those things once you get to know a place really well. Like if we lived out west somewhere, you know, in, in Colorado or something in a small mountain town, you know, we would learn those things about those places, too. But, sure. um, you know, the, the Adirondacks, they're special. There's, you know, and it's a special type of person, I think, too, that can call this place home. So now my final question, uh, why do you hike? And for you, you know, you're running you're running these ultra races. You know, this is you're a professional at the top of your game. We put ourselves through hiking, which is like, it's a strange hobby. You know, you just kind of destroy your body. What is the, what is the reason that you like to do this? Yeah. I mean, I'll agree. Trail running is also a very strange sport. Yeah. (laughs) You know, it's just kind of wild. I don't know why we do these things. Like, you know, I mean, I do know why personally I, um, I think it's, you know, running for me, it's kind of meditative, but it's also a way for me to kind of escape things in a, in a healthy and unhealthy way, to be totally honest with you. But, um, 
it's it's just become part of who I am. Uh, and I, I think I would find another activity that would replace that if I couldn't run. But um, for me, trail running, it provides an outlet. Yeah. Great. So what's next yeah. for you? Um, well, after, I'm hoping my um, extensors here feel better in a week and a half or so, you know, I'm still in some pain. The swelling has done gone down quite a bit. So that's a good thing. Um, and obviously I have Matt here to help me, which is great. So, um, but I'm thinking about maybe doing the 24 and 24, um, if we have a dry warmish fall. So we'll see. And what is the 24 and 24? So Jan, I don't know if Jan coined this or if somebody else came up with this before him, but he did uh, 24 peaks in 24 hours. Oh, got it. Wow. Okay. So that I think um, would be a fun, a fun day. Sure. Uh, (laughs) Type two fun, maybe type three fun actually, but sure. Yeah. Well, hopefully we won't get there. I definitely had enough of that. Yeah. Yeah. Over the last few days. Cool. (laughs) All right. So where can people find you online? Sure. So um, they can find me on Instagram at Sarah Kai's underscore runs. I have an H on my name um, in Sarah. And then my website is sarahruns.com, S-A-R-A-H-R-U-N-S.com. And I think that's my Facebook too, is Sarah Runs. Uh, Yeah, something like that. Cool. So I think that's a great place to wrap up this episode. And There's Sarah Kai's supported FKT attempt, start to finish. Another amazing story from another badass woman out there on the trails doing some extraordinary things. And once again, Sarah completed all 46 high peaks here in the Adirondack Park in 4 days, 22 hours, and 15 minutes. Completely amazing. I hope you all enjoyed hearing Sarah retell her story here on the 46 of 46 podcast. And if you haven't heard Sarah's friendly competitor, Alyssa Gadeski's story yet, Go check out that episode to get the complete picture of what these two went through and accomplished last week out in the ADK backcountry. It's truly incredible. Thanks for listening to this week's Summit Sessions episodes here on the 46 of 46 podcast. And thanks to Sarah and Alyssa for sharing their adventures with us. And a big shout out to both of their crews behind the scenes. Job well done. And to all the listeners next week, I'll be talking to one of Sarah's crew members where you'll hear exactly what went into this attempt from a crew standpoint. And if you like the show, give it a rating and a review on Apple Podcasts. Follow the show on social media at 46 of 46 Podcast. And keep checking back every Friday for new mountains, new stories, new guests, and new episodes here on the 46 of 46 Podcast. Remember to always leave no trace, do the rock walk, and if you carry it in, carry it out. Everything, every single time, banana peels and all. See you on the trails, everybody. Hey everyone, James here from the 46 of 46 podcast. Let me ask you a question. Whether you're waking up in a tent at your campsite after a long day on the trail, or you're driving to work, what's the first thing you want in the morning? Coffee. And so much of it. The new Campfire Blend Steeped Packs from Recess Coffee is exactly what you need to get your body and mind trail ready in the morning. Owned by fellow Adirondack hikers here in upstate New York, Recess Coffee's new steeped packs offer a no-mess, travel-friendly coffee brewing and features one of their most popular coffees, Campfire Blend. Campfire Blend is a medium roast with smoky notes of chocolate and walnut, making it a great companion for those mornings in the backcountry. Plus, their steeped brewing packets are quick and easy to brew on the go, so they're perfect for when you're out on the trail or just at the office and need a taste of the trail with their Campfire Blend. All packaging is compostable, But you know, if you carry it in, carry it out. And you can get it by the packet or try a carton of 10. Recess Coffee is offering listeners 10% off their steeped packs as well as any of their blends and roasts in 12-ounce bags of whole beans with the promo code RECESS46. That's R-E-C-E-S-S-4-6. Just go to RecessCoffee.com to order some steeped campfire blend packets today and use the promo code RECESS46. Pure ADK is an online community and lifestyle brand that creates Adirondack-inspired apparel and goods. They're all about sharing their adventures and creating quality products that are a reflection of the outdoor lifestyle and activities we love in the Adirondack Mountains. Whether born and raised an Adirondack native or a frequent vacationer, we all have a common bond. 
those feelings and memories that the Adirondacks evoke in us. As a bonus for listeners of the podcast, they're providing a 15% off discount when shopping in their